Sometimes, when I make a great effort, I can remember her scent, the sweetness of her breath. Serena. Hello to everyone, I am in Duroc, and today I am playing Serena. So, I found this on uh, Steam, so I figured, you know, the furniture I'll came play. With the cabin. Considering how off the beaten path this place is, that helped make up our mind. Yay. Alright. Uh, Serena? Why can't I see you more clearly? Why can't I even remember? This was taken on that crisp winter night at our mutual friend's hunting lodge. We came back indoors laughing, giddy as teenagers. It was truly like an enchanted time, like we were in a magic circle where no sorrow or pain could touch us. My love, we don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple, so this one is quite important. Mm -hmm. The guy who snapped this, our host that night, used an actual film camera. It was a different world back then. A film camera. Okie doke. My love, we don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple, so okay. this one is quite important. Yeah, alright. Sometimes she would brush her leg against mine under the table when we were eating. Curious, sensual thrill. Okay, do. The table is worn but sturdy, just like our relationship was. You always put too much salt in, dear. Think Oops. about your pressure. Uh, I didn't mean to do that, but... Our dining table. Quite modest, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yay. I could tell plenty of stories about this table. To be honest, I'm surprised it's still in one piece. The dining table was well worn even when we acquired the cabin. You could tell from its appearance that it had been the centerpiece of many happy occasions. And there were many more to come. Our dining table, quite modest, but I could tell plenty of stories about this. The dining table was well worn even when we acquired the okay. cabin. You could tell from its appearance that it had been the centerpiece of many happy occasions. And there were many more to come. Well, I see I can't look any more that way, so I guess I only have... Uh, wait, what? So many afternoons spent in this armchair. Yay! Come sit with me. I want to talk. And cuddle. Mm -hmm. What did we talk about? Damn this fallible memory of mine. The most comfortable spot in the cabin. Well, along with the bed, of course. Mm -hmm. I can imagine her cuddling up to me even now. Putting her hand under my shirt. Awkward. Of course, we made love here, too. There was no place in the cabin we didn't before things deteriorated. The most comfortable spot in the cabin, well, along with the bed, of course. A stitch. Wow, this it looks lovely. Uh... I see I cannot examine it, so let's move. So much wisdom and happiness in this bookcase. My life would have been much poorer without all this. The smell of old books is intoxicating. What happens to wood pulp as it ages gives it that distinctive vanilla smell. I loved it when we took down one of my favorites and curled up on the bed to read together as the wind howled outside on cold winter nights. 
Most of the books are mine, but all of hers are still here, too. A lot of rarities and special editions here. I didn't <laughs> lend out my Necronomicon, did I? No. Of course not. Okay. Most of the books are mine, but okay. all of hers are still here, too. A lot of rarities and special editions here. I'm guessing you're just going to say the same thing. I didn't lend out my Necronomicon, did I? Okay. No. Of course not. Sharing meals with a good red wine <coughs> was one of the great pleasures in our relationship, especially in the intimacy of this cabin. I should probably eat. Can't remember the last time I ate, yet I don't feel hungry. I have more pressing things on my mind right now than culinary exploits. The stove looks like something from World War I. I wonder if it was. How basic and ancient the kitchen is, it's a wonder what we managed to do with it from time to time. Well, she mostly. We had such a wonderful time dining in this cabin. Serena loved to experiment with her cooking. <laughs> Truth be told, not all the cooking she did was a resounding success. Uh, we agreed to never attempt doing ravioli again. You silly dolt. Here, give me that. Don't be such a child. Mm -hmm. I think it dates from the colonial era, probably brought over by the pilgrims. It belongs in a museum. <laughs> in a museum. Yay. An archaeologist could excavate the layers of food forever welded onto this and learn about the days when other beings ruled the earth. <coughs> Is that so? I think it dates from the colonial era. Okay. Probably brought over by the pilgrims. Uh... Oh, I'm sitting in a chair. Okay. So anything else I can look at? I mean, now look at that. Our dining table. All right. Quite modest, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's an interesting sort of point and click thing where everything actually looks very close up. Uh, an actual 3D. I don't know. Okay. What's this? Come, love, with peace in your heart, said Niav of the Ice Blue Eyes. Hmm. Blue Eyes. It's based on an Irish folktale. Warrior poet Oisin goes to Tirnanog, a Celtic otherworld known as the Land of Youth and Promise. Niav is of the Fey folk, the Fair Ones, fairies. Weird mix of doggerel and artistry. The elemental imagery is evocative, but the language and structure are a bit quaint. Still, some lines jump out at you. I've always been drawn to things that are kind of both good and bad at the same time. Maybe because that's so like life. My grandma introduced me to these old legends when I was just a kid, in between stories of what she could still remember of her childhood in the old country. Weird mix of doggerel and artistry. The elemental imagery is evocative, but the light okay. and structure are a bit quaint. Still, some lines jump out at you. So we have a big chest here. Something. Oops. Is it memories locked within? Or something else? Sorry about that. I should start stopping the recording. Starting a new one before I even click anything. We use this trunk to store trinkets and papers, but <coughs> I can't 
help thinking there's something of importance inside. Well, maybe you might want to take a look, it's if thinking. that's so. I want to, but not yet. We found this trunk at a flea market. We used to love rummaging around those in our early years. Big enough for a lifetime of mementos. But we hated guns, so we never had any, even out here. But this would have been a good place to keep one, since it can be locked. We found this trunk at a flea market. We used to love rummaging around those in our early years. Okay, so apparently I can't look at anything else. I could tell plenty of stories about this table. To be honest, I'm surprised it's still in one piece. Huh. This one wobbles. I always meant to do something about that, but somehow never got around to it. This used to be her favorite spot. She used to sit here, put her legs on the table, lean back, and just give me one of her smiles. Those effervescent, incandescent smiles. Once, we dragged these chairs out to the lake and scrubbed off all the dust and grime of years. That was a long time ago. For all the charm of furniture like this, something about it reminds me of Ingmar Bergman. Sort of brooding. One of a matching pair, obviously. There was a piece of gum stuck to the underside of this chair back when we bought this place. We just left it there. <laughs> yeah, I believe a gum would be a pain. Charm of furniture okay. like this. Something about it reminds me of Ingmar Bergman. Sort of brooding. <coughs> Okay. This window never got much attention. Then again, the view isn't nearly as spectacular. <laughs> Priorities, right? I guess it's covered with grease and grime from cooking, mostly. There's probably nothing out there that I want to see, anyway. All the stuff I care about is inside. Well, except for Serena. I can make out nothing through this window. There was a time, long ago, that all this disrepair felt oddly homey. All the windows are drafty, but like everything else, we just got used to it. We liked it, even. I can make out nothing through this window. All right, let's... Okay. She made this with her own hands. She was really good. The rug. Look what I made, hun. In case we ever need to sweep something under the carpet. Yeah, because that was the the entire purpose of carpets. See the pattern of yellow squares? It's from this rug I remembered from my nursery. I must have been like three or four, but it always stuck with me. No trap door under there. More creaky floor. Would have been interesting if there was a trap door under there. I always yeah. resisted the temptation to sweep things under there when it was my turn to tidy up. Hmm. The rug's all crooked again. Can you help me straighten it out? No trap door under there. Okay. Just more creaky floor. Our refuge from the world place of warmth and passion. Sometimes we joked we needed to be so far out in the woods because that's how our sex life was. Far out. The furniture came with the cabin, but the bed clothes we brought with us. A place like this needs some luxury, but without her, there are no monsters under the bed. I guess they're all in my head. I feel too restless to sleep right now. I don't sleep well without Serena next to me. Both a blessing and a curse, I suppose. There are no monsters under the bed. I guess they're all in my head. Hmm. Hello, tick tickety. <coughs> tick tickety, tick tickety, tick tick. 
Fuckery. The clock is a trophy from our flea market adventures. Chalk this particular purchase up to every cabin needs one. The ticking begins to feel homey after a while. The first night was a nightmare, though. You know, a lot of times, sometimes when I'm bored, sometimes I like to listen to a clock ticking. I don't know why. But, well. Time never mattered much to us while we were hiding from the rest of the world here. As long as we were together and happy. The clock has always been rather autonomous. No matter how many times we've wound it up, it keeps going out of sync. Actually, I think it might have gone out of sync again. No trusting this clock. I wonder what time it is. As if it mattered. The clock has always been rather autonomous. No matter how many times we've wound it up, it keeps going out of sync. Wait, wait, what? Okay. She was special. Contradictory. She didn't mind these. Actually, I think she was into them too. Seriously? They... Wow. Seriously. That looks interesting. You can always try it. I read it for the articles, of course. Like that one by... The guy. That one about the... Thing. Right. I needed some incentive to go check the mailbox from time to time. It's some way through the woods. Something good left in this world. They still make covers like this. Erotic, not obscene. She's beautiful, but what's her obsession with Dolph? I needed some incentive to oh. go check the mailbox from time to no, time. No, is there anything Some else here? Apparently not, so let's move on. Eh. Eh. Okay, that was weird. She adored all things of nature. I remember her long walks out in the woods. Curiously, we never brought many plants inside the cabin. We were surrounded by so many outside, and I guess we were saturated by them. At least I was. Maybe I should have let her bring some plants inside. She liked them a lot. A plant is a plant. Beautiful to some, boring to others. They say these things are alive. If they are, it must be a horrible existence, confined in their own silent, dark world. You don't know that. We have much more interesting things than this plant inside the cabin. Like my books. A plant is a plant. Beautiful to some, boring to others. She is fairly religious. Not me. I'm the cold and cynical bastard. But I don't remember that ever being an issue between us. She always thought our relationship was a blessing. God, how I miss her. <laughs> no longer the cynical asshole, I guess. Her faith came as a surprise to me. She was never prudish about sex, so I just didn't expect it. I guess people simply aren't that predictable. No, I don't want to read right now. Especially not a Bible. I have no need for the words in there. I don't feel like being admonished by a deity right now. No, I don't want to read right now. Especially not a Bible. 